it's not good for man to live alone. alone. I'm glad you filled in that blank. So he makes woman. And we have a woman that wants to comment about that. <laughs> Amen, because you men cannot live without women. I'm just saying. I, I'm hearing. And, and I might have disputed you on that, but since my wife is sitting almost in the front row, and I'm going home with her today, I'm not going to dispute that. We violate God's law. And there's consequences. Okay. Now, it might not happen right away. The time element, it could be five years from now. But when we violate God's law, bad things can happen. So you're saying uh, behavior and consequences of behavior or something like that. Uh, that's kind of an overriding theme here. And... As I said, why is it that bad things happen to good people? And bad things don't always happen to good people. Sometimes bad things happen to bad people. And sometimes good things happen to bad people. But we're focused on if, you're, if you know a good person or if you're a good person, something bad happens, uh, why? And then another question here that I don't have on the slides, but uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Why not? Why not? And we'll look at that as we move through the lesson. Uh, just because you're a good people, uh, why shouldn't you have consequences that aren't always good? Uh, where's my mic man here? Uh, right there behind you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, so doesn't it say in the Bible, are we to receive good things from God but not bad? I believe that's in Job. As a matter of fact, uh, if you want to really look at some situations that we won't have time today, I'll just throw this out. If you want to look into this a little more deeply, uh, look at the book of Job. We're going to reference that, but we're not going to have time to get in. That's a pretty big book. Uh, but it's full of this whole idea. Uh, there's other characters. For example, uh, Joseph. You remember the story of Joseph in the coat of many colors? And... and um, if I were Joseph, I'd probably had a few thoughts in my mind like, what's going on here? <laughs> Why is this happening to me? And uh, so there are other characters. Daniel. Remember Daniel? And the more he did the right thing, the worser it got. The worser is... Preacher, that's a word I learned from a preacher. The worser it got, the more he did good things. This uh, young lady on the front row here has a... Con oh. He's got the mic, you're going to have to wait. He's in charge with the mic. I got it right now. <laughs> you know, it, I always troubled with this question about that you pondered here. So I, I, I kind of went back to when we were, when man sinned in the Garden of Eden and he was put out to toil and work and was committing sin and like he said uh, sin brings on all our troubles it because for one it started that we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden we would have had no bad things happen to us had we uh, not ever sinned the original sin you, you understand what I'm saying so from there Man causes a lot of his own problems, and uh, but there is no. I, I always I always like to say that there's no guarantee in life about that it's you're going to go through with no problems. You're going to have problems, and so uh, when somebody a wife dies or something, and somebody says, "Well, why did that have to happen?" Well, God has a time for that to happen. And uh, just, uh, it's just not gonna be that there are no problems. But that's, that was just my, always my take. And you speak as a man with experience, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a brother who was killed and buried him on the day. 
it's tough when we lose a loved one unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah, and we say, why? I, I think that if you talk to people who work in funeral homes, I would dare say the, the interrogative that they hear the most is probably why. Why did this happen? Why does it happen now? And so forth, and there's never an easy answer for that. But I think what I hear you saying is to have problems afflict us is the human condition. I'm getting a wave here. Uh, a comment right after my wife says something because I got to go home with her. Go ahead. I I believe I believe th bad things can happen to good people, um, even though you might not. Maybe you did sin, but at the same time, I think God lets bad things happen to good people for their own growth spiritually okay. so that he, they will run to him and say, Lord, why did this happen? And uh, I didn't do anything wrong and so forth like that. But I think that's, and we talked about this the other day, um, how we, you don't remember. <laughs> if you say so, honey. <clears throat> but seriously, we talked about this the other day and uh, uh, good people do have a lot of bad things happen to them and they haven't done anything wrong, at least that we know of. So anyway, that's my statement. I'm sticking to it. Well, thank you very much. And from the crow's nest, we have a comment and they've got their own mic up there. No, my microphone was stolen. Oh. So yeah, you do, and it's working. Um, Jesus said in the Beatitudes that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And also, in uh, Hebrews 12, 6, it says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. So good things happen to bad people and vice versa. But also, when you're going down the wrong track, it's likely to backfire. We're not immune from correction, are we? Uh, those of you that have had children, and some of you, I would presume, have had children, and as you think about the, the younger children, you can't sit down usually and have a rational discuss, discussion explaining why they shouldn't do certain things that are not good for them. And sometimes you give them a good explanation and you think you've made progress and they go back and do it again. And so you start over and, and so forth and so on and, and you continue trying to correct them in various ways so that they will not do what is going to be harmful to them. And I kind of see that as a metaphor for you and I. Why do we continue doing some dumb things even though God has tried to explain to us, hey, you shouldn't do that. Uh, that's not good for you, it's not good for me. Uh, don't do that anymore. And what do you know? Uh, we get into a situation and we lapse back in it. But we're going to talk a little bit more. So hang on to that thought. Because we're going to talk a little more about this struggle that goes on that we probably don't even see. Okay? And you've given me kind of an intro and I appreciate that. But um, uh, we know that just doing good things is not an immunity against us having problems. Because look how good you've been. And yet you've had a problem or two down the road and you think, wait a minute, I'm being good. I can't have a problem. Well, guess what? We're gonna talk about why that happens. So hang on with me, okay? Uh, we're gonna move ahead. Who causes bad things to happen? Well, I'll tell you, I got the answer here. Is it God? Well, some people will say that, God, why'd you, why'd you make this happen? So, why are you letting me have this bad time? God, I don't like you anymore. I'm going to give up on you or whatever. So is it God that causes bad things to happen? Is it Satan? Yes. I, I heard a yes there. <laughs> well, I've gotten a yes over here too. So Satan, and we're going to look very quickly at that. But he has a role to play, and that role started way back when. And, and, of course, you didn't say this, 
And I don't want to put words in your mouth. But if it hadn't been for that woman. <laughs> and as I recall, that's a, what version would that be where Adam said it that way to God? God, it's that woman. Isn't that what he said, basically? I mean, that's the modern translation. But we won't go there right away, okay? So, well, oh, sure. Your wife's not in here, but you're still backpedaling. I got you. I got you. Um, so who caused it? Is it God? Is it Satan? How about us? Do we cause bad things to happen? Boy, I'm seeing some head shakes here. And it's, it's my wife that's shaking very hard because it said man. That means women too, honey. That's in its broadest sense there. He, she's really jumping on the train. Um, God is blamed, is he not? Why did you let this happen, God? I've been faithful to you. Uh, and it could be a lot of things. We've had a lot of earthquakes lately around the world. Did God cause that? Well, some would say so. Um, other kinds of disasters. If someone dies that's near and dear to us, God, why'd you let them die? Well, did God let them die? I'm not sure. Uh, you, some of you, and I know who you are, remember Flip Wilson. I'm, I'm getting a response here. Remember what he used to say? The devil made me do it. And um, I think there's people that ascribe to that theology that the devil made me do it. And... Uh, Sometimes he is trying to make us do things, is he not? He's out there like a roaring lion. How about man? Well, let me give you some thoughts. I prayed and God didn't help me. You ever heard that one? I prayed about this and God didn't help me. Well, what if God is helping you and you ask for the wrong thing? Well, I couldn't have asked the wrong thing. Uh, here's another one. It's the wife or the husband's fault. You know, pick a side there. I was doing all right until she, or until he, and so there's the fingers going back and forth. Well, you know, it's my boss. If my boss wasn't this way, I could be a whole lot better. And some of you that are retired, I suspect you still have a boss. I'm not going to name names, but, you know, uh, here's a good one. Here's a really good one. It's my mother-in-law. Uh, those of you that are mother-in-laws, God bless you. <laughs> a comment. All right, Mr. Mike Mann, Susie has a comment. I said mother-in-law and her hand went up, so I'm a little nervous about that, but we'll go ahead. I love my mother-in-law. What about man's free will that God gave us? Well... We're going to talk about that, but thanks for interjecting that because it gets back to the, to the garden scene in Genesis. And we're going to refer to that because isn't that where the trouble started? And God made us to have free will. And if he hadn't, just think how easy things would have been. Well, his whole idea, and I'm not speaking for God here, but a theory that I have is if we were nothing but robots who were programmed to love God and never make mistakes, how would God know we really love him? I think God, and I'm not going to speak for God either this morning, but if you've had children and they've messed up, and that's everybody, if you've had children, they messed up. And they came back to you and said, I'm sorry, I messed up. Is that not a wonderful moment? Yeah. And I'm not talking about little kids. I'm talking about big grown kids and they mess up and they come back to you and say, I really messed up, mom, and I'm really sorry about that. That's the sweetest moment of all, I think. I'm provoking this man over here on this side and I'm sorry yeah. about that. I could comment on that, but I wanted to go back to something. Uh, well, you got me caught on that idea. and I. Uh, oh, oftentimes we don't see when God is answering our, our prayers. Right. 
So we wanted to move years ago, but we always kind of lived paycheck to paycheck. That's just, uh, I didn't make a lot of money. I understand that. So uh, there, there's probably a lot of people who do understand it. I was always uh, very, I could, I could build things and stuff, so I had a lot of skills. So I built a garage. Of course, this is coming out of weekly checks, right? And I had a lot of tools. I was a mechanic. One day, uh, our garage burnt down. We always wanted to move, but we couldn't. We were stuck. The garage burned down. And I, <laughs> there's a catastrophic thing you know that I had worked on for years and God why did you let my garage burn down well didn't see it as a blessing when the fire was happening and everything uh, but because of the insurance money <laughs> we were able to move and of course the question everybody did you burn it down on purpose Paul <laughs> and uh because of that, we were able, it answered our prayers. Yeah. Uh, and we moved out to where we live now, and we've been there 35 years, okay? Well, you know, isn't this interesting? We pray to God that we need help, and here's what I need, God. We need help to move. So God says, okay, I'll burn down your garage, yeah. and that way you can move. And you're saying, wait a minute. How does burning down my garage help me to move? Well... You've heard that phrase, God moves in mysterious ways. That's right. Uh, God's ways are not my ways. God's knowledge is not my knowledge. And I'm not saying God burned down your garage. Don't I, get me wrong on I that. I don't either, but it, it was But uh, this problems. happened, this happened, and then that happened. And um, aren't you glad that you got to move? Yeah. It's called a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yes. A blessing in disguise. Okay, um, let's move on here. Who causes bad things to happen? We've said God. Uh, God made man, and this gets back to what you said early on. Placed him in the garden. It's back in Genesis. You know the story. And everything was perfect. Everything was good. And uh, then we, we get into this where God made woman. God says, you know, Adam needs more than what he has right now. He's got all these animals. He's got the trees and so forth. But what he really needs is a woman. I'm seeing some interesting looks on yeah. men and women's faces as I say that. And let's just keep in mind, that wasn't Adam's decision. I'm taking up for Adam this morning. That was God's decision that he said, it's not good for man to live alone. alone. I'm glad you filled in that blank. So he makes woman. And we have a woman that wants to comment about that. <laughs> Amen, because you men cannot live without women. I'm just saying. I, I'm hearing. And, and I might have disputed you on that, but since my wife is sitting almost in the front row, and I'm going home with her today, I'm not going to dispute that. But I think there's been some discussion over the centuries on both sides of that equation. Do I really need this man? He seems to cause problems. He doesn't understand and blah, blah, blah. And then on the other side of that equation, I don't understand this woman. Why does she do that? Where is she coming from? And again, if there's this misunderstanding, this natural stress, I guess we have to blame God, right? Because he made man and then he said, that's not good. I'm going to make a woman, and we're going to put them together in this garden, and it's going to be a wonderful, beautiful experience, right? Um, the fall of man in the garden. We're not going to spend a lot of time. You know the story and how they kind of pointed fingers. Who told you? <laughs> he did. She did. And so there's a lot of people that would say we cause our own problems, and we, we can don't get me wrong, we can cause our own problems, making bad decisions. But how about Satan? And if we had the time, of which we don't, but I challenge you, if you haven't looked at Job lately, 
Go back and peruse through the book of Job. And the first two chapters is where it gets set up. Remember, a rich man had a bunch of kids, had more camels than anybody could count, and so forth and so on. And all of a sudden, bad things start happening to his family and eventually to him. And you remember what his wife said when things really got bad? Any of you women remember what the wife said? Thank you, Mrs. Uh, <laughs> I ask if there's a woman, and immediately I hear this voice coming down. But you're right. Curse God and die. I think he just passed out. Uh, <laughs> you know, I couldn't teach this class if I didn't have people up in the crow's nest. I mean, I mean in more ways than one. But um, again, we're seeing kind of the beginnings of, of some of these things. And who's the problem? It is Satan. God says, have you considered? Oh, have I considered? Yes, sir. It's so wonderful having the mic. I have control. I can comment anytime I want well, to. Well, you got more control than anybody. Yeah. So let me put this one on the list. Just as God uses people, sometimes Satan uses people. And Satan, and Satan can use people to do something to God's people. So there's one more. Well, I agree with you totally. It, his, Satan's power to cause problems didn't stop in the garden. And we're going to talk about, about that in just a little bit. Uh, frustrate God and man? Yes. Uh, he's a tempter. He's an alienator. Uh, his job is to alienate you from God and me from God. That's his job. And he's pretty good at it. And he has a lot of resources to call upon. And sometimes we're his greatest resource. You remember what Eve said about eating the fruit, why she did it? I know that was a long time ago. The devil made her do it, yeah. And, and she thought it looked pretty good too, right? He said, did God really say you couldn't eat of that? Well, yeah. Well, just take a look at that. That's nutritious. It's fat-free. There's no cholesterol in that. I mean, this is the good stuff, and God's wanting to keep it to himself? I think you ought to go ahead and try it. Um, now, that is another modern version there. Uh, but doesn't he tempt us today in a very similar way? He can make bad things look good. He can say, well, hey, it's just this one time. Does it count as a sin if you're, not, if you're 50 miles away from where you live? Isn't there a 50-mile rule? Neil, you know about the 50-mile rule? Well, inflation. You might know inflation has even affected the sinning world. You gotta be 150. Well, we got a guy that flies all the time. You're always 150 miles away, right? We're gonna have to watch you. Uh, but he wants to alienate us from God. That's his job. And is he good at it? Pretty good. And we must be on guard, on guard. Uh, we're moving on. How about man's desires? Does man have desires that get in the way? Would that be a yes? And we're using man in the generic term, women too. Um, that uh, we have situations. And again, who causes that? Well, Satan helps us, doesn't he? And have you ever heard the thing, God, why did you give us freedom of choice? Why didn't you just make us robotic? And that way we would always do the right thing. We'd be programmed to never do the wrong thing, and we'd always do the right thing. But no, God, you gave us free will. You gave us the ability to choose between alternatives. And Satan knows that. And Satan takes a, a good advantage of that 
part of us that we want to make choices and sometimes we make bad choices. We see that in our children. We try to raise them right. Why did you do that? Well, so-and-so did it. Or so-and-so's got one of those. I wanted one of those too. Uh, and so forth. And you've heard all that before. Uh, I thought it was interesting, again, just referring one more time to Adam and Eve. Remember after they realized they sinned and God came to talk with them? What'd they do? They ran away and hid like they could hide from God, their creator. But before we condemn them, do people today think they can hide from God? Uh, Well, this was just a little sin. God's got a lot of people to worry about. He won't notice this. I'm, I'm provoking this man over here, and I'm sorry, but can you give him a mic? Wait a minute. They need to hear you. Just cover where sin comes to your mind and takes full fruition, and then you go and commit it. It's, it all starts inside of our own thoughts, and, and, uh, that, and, and the devil can, add, can do it, put something out there to tempt us, but sin starts within, and grows to full fruit fruition. Yeah. We, we've got we've to take the blame on it. And that's what God was saying to Adam. And he said, well, it's that woman. You know, if you, ladies, if you've heard that before, that's not original with your man. He is copying that. And he may not have even read the Bible, but that's a copy of, of that first situation. God, if you hadn't given me that woman... My life would have been so simple. I'm getting a a strong head shake in the front row. but I'm not going to mention names. Uh, But humans can blame one another, can't we? And we do that so well. Uh, It wasn't my fault, God. It was that, and you fill in the blank. It's those kids. (laughs) It's that wife. It's that husband. Um, Again, look at Job chapters 1 and 2 when you go home. You'll see the dialogue there that really gets gets to the heart of the matter. Uh, He gives us temptations. It's an external thing with us. We're going along and all of a sudden, wow, there's a temptation. And what tempts me may not tempt you at all. But he has got a bag of temptations that can work with anybody. And if we're aware of that, and aware that when we face a temptation, we need God's help. If you had children, and you had little children, and they got into some trouble, I recall only vaguely, uh, my father was a big swimmer. And so he thought the best way to train me to swim when I was about three was to throw me in the lake. And it was the idea of sink or swim. Well, I was sinking like a rock. And I, I don't remember the lake or much about it, but I remember being very frightened that I'm, I'm going down for the third time, the fourth time. But all of a sudden, I felt these strong arms scoop me up. And I'm probably coughing and sputtering, but he scooped me up and saved the day. And of course, he knew I was having trouble. And he knew, and he wasn't that far away, I'm sure. But it was that scoop up that I remember to this day. And I think God is like that. He is our Father. He is interested in you and me. And when we are facing situations, the temptations, uh, he is there waiting to help us, to give us what we need if we'll just give him the chance to turn it over. My mother had that phrase, she had a lot of troubles in her life. It wasn't her fault, but um, she just had, had troubles. And she'd say, you know, I prayed about this, and I just turned it over to God. And when I first heard that, I thought, well, maybe you need to try a little harder. I didn't tell her that. Uh, Neil, you don't tell your mom that, do you? Mom, you need to try a little harder. But she had the right attitude. 
she had done everything she knew to do. She'd prayed to God about it and turned it over to him and said, God, help me. And boy, that was the right attitude. Ron has a comment in the back here, if I can get my mic man over there. Um, if you have a Bible, uh, you might turn to Matthew chapter 4 while we're getting a comment, because I want to look at that. I think it is a passage that we need to think about. Mr. Ron. You may be turning to what I was thinking of. God allows the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. But anyway. I, no, I was that's not where I'm going, but that's a good one. I that's was thinking that God created a natural order, and whether by accident or design you violate that order, uh, the repercussions of that violation are going to affect you. If you. In other words, that's, that's saying the same thing, I think. But the best answer, I think, for our situation today is, after Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, Satan came to him and tried his best to get him to sin. And, and his answer was, it is written. And so he used God's word and, and what he knew to be right to not follow through. Temptations are one thing, but following through is another. And that's, that's why I'm, I've often expressed concern about young people uh, being baptized and then having to go through some of the things that, that men or women go through during their lifetime. They, they do a lot of praying about it, I'm sure, or asking for forgiveness because they're human just like the, those who belong to Satan. And, uh, Natural order, violation, uh, consequences. You got it right. And at the risk of sounding really techy, of which I'm not, uh, we do live in a binary world for all you tech people out there. There's good and evil. There's right and wrong. There's behavior and consequences. It just gets so binary. I can't stand it. But I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And if you have some gray hair, and some of you do, and if you're needing a little more hair, uh, some of you might, you know what I'm talking about. If this, then that. And why didn't we get that the first time around? And my wife has asked me that many times, but we won't go there. Um, in Matthew chapter 4, we find the, the model, I guess I would say. And it's Satan coming to tempt Jesus. And we're not going to take the time because we don't have it this morning. But I would refer you back. Look at that when you get home this week. Because that's the model about Satan tempting the Son of God. And how did Jesus cope with that? He went back in Satan's face and said, Here's what God said to do. And I'm going to do it. Get away from me. Ah, but what about this? I can give you all of this. No. God said, and that's what I'm going to do. So if you haven't read that in a while, you go back and just look at that. It won't take you long to read that passage. Uh, but go back and take a look at that in Matthew chapter 4 because it really uh, is a good spot. And I'm, gonna, I'm glad the preacher's here because I'm referencing him. Uh, the other day, I, you didn't think I was paying attention. I was nodding off there in the third row. He was watching me. I paid attention. Uh, what's the difference between a trial and a temptation? If it hadn't been for the preacher, I would have been ignorant but he enlightened me. All right, what is the difference? The purpose for trial is to grow us. You've had some trials. I'm not talking about court trials, although that could be a trial, I suppose. But if you've had a trial and you succeeded, you've grown. Do we always succeed? Probably not. But when we do, it's like, yes, 
it's the victory. Right now we're going through the basketball tournament and there's been some upsets in terms of teams that were ranked 16 against uh, number one and whatever and so forth. Can you imagine the celebration when that David defeats Goliath? Incredible. Uh, did they grow from that? Boy, I'll bet they did. It's the coach's dream. Uh, coach needs a raise. But a purpose of trial is to grow us. And if we can face the trial with the help of God, we'll be a better person on the, on the, on the far side. It's like going through the storm. You survive the storm, you're still alive. And you're able to move on. And you probably know a little more about how to deal with that storm. Uh, especially if you have a wife that can help you. Um, purpose of temptations. Back to Satan. He is tempting you every day. He's tempting you every day, isn't he? I'm not asking for exactly why. We don't want to know that. That's above our pay grade. But if you think Satan isn't tempting you, you've got a problem. <laughs> think again. That's right. There's little temptation. It's not big things. It may be the little things that's going to trip us up. And we need to be aware of that, that he is trying to defeat us. He's trying to take us away from God. He's trying to, to put that wedge between you and God, and he does it little by little. And if he does it right, it works. So what are you going to do? we got just enough time to, to let you know what to do. Okay? And you wanted to know what to do. I, I saw your mind. He said, okay, what are we going to do about this? Seek God, his help. You talk to God every morning. You talk to him later in the day. You talk to him at night. You know, God is there 24-7. He's always on call. He's ready. Uh, remember when Peter stepped out of the boat in the middle of the storm? Jesus coming across the waters. Jesus, and Peter says, <laughs> I got this. Let me come out there. He said, come on. And he's looking at the Lord, and he's stepping out on the water, and the other apostles are thinking, how in the world are they doing that? But he took his eye off God, and what happened? He started sinking like a rock. And he needed to refocus on God, on Jesus. And when he did, it was okay. You ever need to refocus? Reboot. Preacher's got a thought. I've got, I've got a bike here too, I think. We'll see if it works. It's not working. All right. Let's talk loud. You're a preacher. All right. Uh, one of the ways that we refocus, and I think this is so important to us. One of the ways we refocus, and I think this is so important to our class today, is realize that this is God's story, not my story. We're God's story? We are God's story. We're not our own. We were bought with a price. And when temptation, whatever it is, bad things are going on, we need to realize that we're a part of God's story for his glory. And how we handle what's going on with us determines whether or not we are glorifying God or God's being glorified. I like that thought. We are God's story. I don't want to be God's story. Sorry. It's too late. You, you made a decision to follow God. You are a part of God's story, whether you like it or not. Here's what we need to do. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I like that verse. I try to look at that often because that's kind of the basis of what we need to be doing. We need to be seeking God and his righteousness. Uh, here's another thing we need to do. Seek help of other Christians. We're here together in this room. We're talking about God. Is that strengthening you? Are you feeling spiritually better because you look around and you see others who have that same desire of being a God pleaser? of being a faithful child of God? I do. When I see you come in, I, I'm usually standing at the back or I'm roaming around looking at stuff and I see people coming, boy, I feel good. 
Because I know it isn't just me. We are a team. Yes, sir, Ray's got a comment right back there. Right behind John. Just a quick comment. We're talking about the adults here. Yes, we are. But Satan tempts the children. Satan tempts the young. A child could go talk about hunger. A child could go into the store with his mom, and he sees something he likes. He might just take it, put it in his pocket. Uh, Satan always there right from the very beginning. So as grown-ups, we should be aware and watch our little ones. That's my comment. I like that, and I would say that my brother picked something up at a grocery store. Uh, we got home, my mother saw it. She marched him right back down there to the grocery store, made him give it to Joe, who owned the store, and say, I'm sorry. Now, I was glad it was him and not me, but I didn't pick anything up and take it home with me. But I love going down this hallway because we got precious little souls there. And we got some dedicated people that are working with them and helping them and helping them know God. And you know what? It isn't just the teachers. It's you. You people. You people. You have a, a role to play with that too. To help the little people and those people that are in between. And boy, that's a tough time. One other thing, and I want to say before we wrap up, and we're, we're one minute shy. Remain faithful to God forever. Amen. That's the other piece. It's a three-legged stool. stool. And that's the third leg. It's probably the first leg. Remain faithful to God. And he's going to take care of you. We know that. It's in the book. Time after time. Okay? We are definitely out of time. Next week, as I said, we're going to talk about baptism. And I want you to do some reference in your Bible about baptism. A lot of examples of it happening. And we'll take that because people are going to say, why are you being baptized? What's the deal? What's so big about that? Well, you're going to have the answers next week. Okay? I appreciate your thoughts on it.